Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video I'm going to be going over all of the Blu-ray and 4K movies that I've picked up through the months of September and October 2024. So yeah, apologies for the the long gap in videos. I'm still uh, still very very busy away from YouTube unfortunately, but that hopefully will be coming to an end as we go into 2025. So not long to go. Um, before I can hopefully sort of dedicate more time to YouTube. But I thought it's been a while. We're coming to the end of October. There's two months left of the year. I'll go over this uh, this haul that I've um, accumulated over the last two months. But first off, I want to give um, just a mention to um, something that happened to me recently with Instagram. I'm not going to get too much into it, but my old uh, Instagram account, anyone who followed me on Instagram... That account now has gone. It has. Uh, it's no longer in my hands. It has um, been taken away from me. So I've come with come up with a, a new account, and I've left the link on my channel page to that account. If you followed me and still want to follow me, that is now the place where you can find me. So I've left the details for that on my YouTube homepage. But yeah, it's. Um, it's been a bit frustrating with Instagram. It still is frustrating uh, because you try and do things too quickly on there. Like I'm trying to re sort of rebuild what I had. Instagram thinks you're up to no good and it has sort of delayed me from doing things. I can't follow anyone. I can't like anyone's content. I can't follow anyone back until the 2nd of November. So a bit frustrating with Instagram, but hey ho. That's what you get for being um, for doing nothing and getting punished for it. But yeah, that's uh, I'll leave that there with Instagram. But yeah, that's my new account. I've left a link to that on my YouTube homepage. So yeah, thanks for following me on there. But yeah, and then that being said, I'm going to get straight in to the Blu-rays now. And yeah, we've got a fair few titles to get through. So yeah, yeah we'll uh, get into them. So coming up first, we've got a special edition here for a sequel to a horror film that was very, very kindly sent to me via uh, from Connor Gray via Key from Euphoria Pictures. Connor Gray, absolutely amazing supporter um, of the channel and the live streams we do. And he very kindly gifted me this edition. And Keith very kindly sort of passed it on in the mail with some other items that Keith sent me, which I'll get into later on in the video. But yeah, he sent me this lovely, lovely boxed edition of Halloween 2 with this absolutely amazing lenticular slipcover. That sort of orange line you can see is my, is the, well, the street light outside. It's picking it up. I'm trying to sort of um, not show that. But yeah, it's such an amazing edition, this. I believe this is the only way as well you can get your hands on the TV version of the movie. Um, there's no sort of other edition that has that. I don't even think that the Screen Factory version has it on Blu-ray. But yeah, absolutely amazing edition. I'll give you a look at the back of it as well. Great scene from the movie. It pretty much takes place in a hospital, this film. I enjoy it. It's a great follow-up. I know John Carpenter absolutely despises this film and thought it was just a completely redundant movie. But I enjoy it for what it is. It flows perfectly with the first one for me. Tonally, it's a bit different, but... I still enjoy it nonetheless. So a massive thank you again to Conor Gray for sending this over. So that is Halloween 2. So coming up next, we've got some movies that I yeah, picked up recently, recent watches for me um, to sort of come out from this year. So the first one, well, the next one we've got is Disney's and it's Pixar film. And that is Inside Out 2. I really enjoyed this one. I had a great fun time with it. Decent follow-up to the first film. I don't think it's as good as the first one, but it goes in a direction I like. Introduces new characters, new threats. Yeah, just really, really enjoyed this one. Opted to get the Blu-ray on this because it was a first-time watch. Didn't catch this one at the cinema, but yeah, enjoyed it nonetheless. So that's Inside Out 2. Next one is one, unfortunately, I was a little bit disappointed with. I did opt for the Blu-ray on this one instead of the 4K because I just didn't enjoy the film all that much, but maybe on rewatch I might enjoy it more. And that is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, I was not a big fan of this film. 
I was quite disappointed with it, to be honest. I didn't think, I didn't hate it. I didn't think it was awful. I thought the special effects and it looked amazing. The story just didn't work for me. I thought the will, villain was really weak in the film as well. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but the villain's motivation in this film compared to some of the other motivations for the villains we'd had in the previous movies, it was so lackluster and it just did not work for me at all. Yeah, a bit disappointed with this one, but I've only seen it the once and that was at the cinema. I need to give the Blu-ray a rewatch, but like I said, played it safe with the Blu-ray and did not for the 4K on this one. So that's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Next up is another movie I think that was from this year. Um, it was the uh, director who brought us Poor Things. I was really intrigued to see this one. Missed it at the cinema, and that is Kinds of Kindness. I enjoyed this movie. I didn't enjoy it anywhere near as much as I did Poor Things, but this is kind of like an anthology movie. It pretty much follows the cast as they sort of loosely play different roles in three separate stories in the film, but they're all kind of weird in their own quirky little way. Really enjoyed the performances in it. Jamie, uh, Jesse Plemons, Willem Dafoe, Emma Stone. Really like the cast. But I can understand that this movie's not for everyone. There were things in the third story I wasn't too keen on involving a dog. I thought that was a bit mean-spirited. But other than that, I thought the movie was pretty good. So that's Kindness of Kindness. Next up, another movie I was kind of sort of bitterly disappointed by. What didn't hate this movie by any means at all, but... You know when you just watch a movie and you're in the wrong sort of frame of mind? And I love the first two films, but yeah, this one's A Quiet Place Day One. Again, played it safe, opted for the Blu-ray. Yeah, I thought it was okay. It just it just didn't catch me in the right frame of, of mind, this one. I don't know what it was. You have that sometimes with movies, and this one was just a prime example of that. I probably need to give this one another go, give it my full attention... And, yeah, see if my opinion of it changes. But for right now, it's probably a solid 6 out of 10. Whether it improves or not, I don't know. But, yeah, that's A Quiet Place, day one. Next up, we had a horror film I was very, very intrigued to check out. And I enjoyed it. Very different, very different take. Uh, so this is In a Violent Nature. Very much a slow burn, this one. Takes place sort of from the killer's perspective. Everything is played out in real time in this movie. Well, it, it definitely feels like that. But the build-up and the tension, I just thought it was so good. Some of the kills in this were some of the best you'll ever see in a horror film. Um, I think there's one floating about called the Yoga Kill now. I think that's how it's been branded. It's one of the best kills in a horror film you'll ever see. It, it's something ripped straight out of a terrifying movie, in my opinion anyway. And it just works so well in this film. It was a highlight. Definitely, but it's it's one of these slasher films. It's not going to be for everyone. When it's violent, it's really violent. It goes there, it delivers. But in other parts of the movie, it can be quite slow, and I can see a lot of people sort of not being on board with that. And that's fine, I get it. But I enjoyed it for what it was. So that's in a violent nature. Next up, as sort of December is on the horizon... I upgraded a movie from my childhood to Blu-ray. I've had it on DVD for the longest time. Jim Carrey and Ron Howard's Dr. Zeus's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This is just daft light entertainment for me. It's one of these movies I watch every December, so I decided to upgrade it as I'm just looking forward to checking it out when December rolls around and as we get closer to the big day. So, yeah, that's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Next up, this movie could not be more different from that British movie from the 80s, the late 80s, that would never, ever in a million years be made today. Guaranteed to upset all the woke brigade. Uh, Rita Sue and Bob 2. I enjoy this movie. It's It goes someplace... Like I said, it just definitely would not be made today, but it's so much of a product of the times. But I enjoy this film. I like it. I like the cast of characters in it. It's, yeah, it's it can be uncomfortable in places if you're looking through this movie now, through 2024 glasses. But, yeah, it's it's like that old saying, the past is a foreign country, they just do things differently there. And this movie is definitely, uh, definitely does that and fit into that bracket, but 
I love this movie nonetheless. I really like it. If there's anything really good about this movie, it's the opening theme. The rest of the soundtrack is fucking bonkers. I, I just don't know. There's a, there's a scene in this where Bob's driving the two babysitters. The music is just some of the most horrendous noise I've ever heard. But I kind of just like it all the same. Don't know what it is, but yeah. Rita Sue and Bob too. If you know this movie, if you know, you know what, what it's about. So yeah, check it out just for out of curiosity if you've not seen it anyway. So that's Rita Sue and Bob too. Next up, one of my favourite movies from 1990. I absolutely love and adore this film. I did own it on, well, I, I do own it on Blu-ray currently, but I opted to get this version of it, and this is the extended version. I think this is, clocks in at nearly four hours, and it is Kevin Costner's Dancers with Wolves. I haven't checked out the extended version yet, but I wanted to pick this up because I've been so intrigued to see it, and I'm glad I've got the Blu-ray now to call upon when I do want to check this one out. But yeah, it's a movie I absolutely love. It's not for everyone. I know it's a bit slow in places. And a lot of people who aren't really a Kevin Costner fan. For me, I enjoy him. I enjoy this movie and this these types of movies he do, does, these big epics. And this is by far one of, if not his best movie. It's the one I enjoy the most by him. But yeah, I'm just intrigued to see this full-on director's cut of it at some point. So that's the extended cut of Dancers with Wolves. Next up, we've got a comedy with Jason Bateman, and I hadn't heard of this one. I enjoyed it. I had a fun time with this one, and it is Bad Words. So it kind of follows Jason Bateman's character, who takes part in a spelling bee for children, and he finds this loophole where he's allowed to take part in this competition just so he can beat these kids. And that's pretty much the movie. It's a mean-spirited black comedy, which... I enjoy these types of movies. I liked it. It had a fun cast and um, a satisfying ending, to say the least. So, yeah, that's Bad Words. And next up is a remake to a movie. I did pick up the original on 4K, which I will get to a bit later, but I picked up the remake. I hadn't seen it. I wanted to check it, uh, check it out. And I watched this and the original back-to-back -back on the same day. So this is uh, based off the Stephen King novel, and it is Pet Cemetery. I thought this was an okay remake. It was a little bit too close to the original. It did change up a, th a thing or two here and there, uh, specifically with the, um, well, with what happens to one of the children in this movie. They sort of swapped things around there, which I wasn't expecting. But yeah, it's uh, it was a decent follow-up. Not as good as the original for me, but still... I want to check it out simply out of curiosity. And I got something out of it. So that's Pet Cemetery. Next up were a couple of titles. Um, this first one anyway. I picked up based on um, Ash over Popcorn and Horror. I picked this one up. Michael Bean. And it is The Victim. I didn't know what to expect going into this one. I had a look at some of the reviews. And they weren't very favourable to it. But I've got to admit... I like this movie. I enjoyed it. It was the bad schlock I expected it to sort of be, but at the same time, I shouldn't like this movie, but I just did. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just the fact that Michael Bean was in it. I don't know, but yeah, it was a weird movie, but check this one out for yourselves. You might hate it. You might love it. It's worth a gamble, so that's The Victim. Next up, another comedy with Jason Bateman. Great cast in this one. Kristen Wiig, Mila Kunis, J.K. Simmons, and that is Extract. Yeah, just a fun comedy. I enjoyed it. Had some serious moments in it as well. It was just, it was just fun. It was just a easy to watch movie with familiar faces in the cast. Um, Gene Simmons as well pops up in the movie, um, kind of as like sort of a semi villain in the film, but. Yeah, enjoyed this one. It was a good laugh and it was a good time. So that's extract. Next up, we have more of like a, a sort of serious drama. Uh, Julianne Moore, Elliot Page, uh, Michael Shannon. Uh, yeah, and it is free held. This was, um, yeah, it was an intriguing, decent little movie. One of these movies that gets based on, you know, a true story that happened. It followed this uh, police officer played by Julianne Moore, uh, who's in a relationship 
with the then Ellen Page, who's now Elliot Page. But yeah, it sort of follows her. They're in a, a, a lesbian relationship. And it sort of deals with the fact that she becomes ill. And she can't really sort of... There's these laws in place that can't don't allow her to leave her pension if she passes away to her to her spouse because she is gay in the movie, which is just absolutely absurd. But it was just what it's just the everyday struggle, I guess, that uh, gay people at the time had to face. It was just ridiculous looking back on it how these these rules just hindered these people just because they were gay. It was pretty much disgusting, but. This is the movie that sort of deals with the legal case of that and trying to sort of rectify it. And I enjoyed it. It had a heartbreaking ending and a satisfying ending all at the same time. It was, again, just one of these movies that's based on a true story. It's worth a watch. And yeah, I just enjoyed it for what it was. So that's Free Held. Next up, a bit more of a lighthearted movie here. Uh, Bradley Cooper, Dax Shepard, Kristen Bell. Hit and run. This was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. It was daft. It was over the top. One of these sort of 2000 comedies types of movie. Yeah, it, it, it just delivered. It had did everything it said on the tin. Um, but of um, depth as well to Bradley Cooper's character in this movie, um, which I wasn't expecting. You kind of sort of sympathize with him a little bit. And yeah, I just enjoyed the movie. It was a nice little surprise. So that's hit and run. And next up, Anya Taylor-Joy, really enjoyed this one. I'm sort of really liking some of her stuff that she's doing as well. The late Anton Yelchik, and that is Thoroughbreds. Yeah, enjoyed this one. I'd heard a bit of buzz about this movie when it came out, but I just never got around to it. And I finally checked it out. Enjoyed it. Good, solid movie. I want to check it out again sometime. Maybe I'll get a bit more out of it, but from what I did, yeah, really enjoyed this one. So that's Thoroughbreds. And next up, we've got sort of some of the uh, 80s movies now that I picked up on Blu-ray. Some of these sort of undiscovered gems that I just really dug. This first one comes with an absolutely gorgeous slipcover. It's a movie by Bobby Roth. And that is Heartbreakers. Look at the slipcover on this. Absolutely gorgeous. Even the back as well. Just absolutely amazing. I came across this movie on one of the bigger YouTube channels. He was going through sort of every movie from the 80s he's doing it sort of parallel with the 2000s so this year he did 1984 and i went through some of the back catalog of the couple of videos he'd done and this movie came up some other movies on this i've got coming up now came up on on this list and i checked this one out i really enjoyed this film it sort of follows two artists who are kind of sort of like struggling to make ends meet in their in their um, professional life in their personal life with relationships and stuff i really enjoy this but the standout was the soundtrack my god this movie just dripped 80s music it was amazing not 80s pop music or chart music or anything like that it was just the score it was amazing really really enjoyed it um absolutely amazing addition as well just i'd never even known it existed but yeah really really solid movie from the 80s that's heartbreakers uh, next up, i got a couple of Jamie Lee Curtis movies. Um, so the first one stars, obviously, her, Patrick Swayze, C. Thomas Howell, and that is Grandview, USA. It sort of follows this small town. Jamie Lee Curtis has sort of been left this, um, this business by her father, and it's under sort of scrutiny. Someone wants to close it down, and it's about her sort of like trying to save the business. C. Thomas Hall, Patrick Swayze, great supporting cast in this movie as well. Not perfect by any means, but I did enjoy it for what it was. So that's Ground View USA. And another Jamie Lee Curtis film I got was uh, Love Letters. I think this was from 1983. A good sort of, not so much a thriller, but a romantic sort of, I don't know. I don't know. It was... It, I, I couldn't call it a thriller, but it was a suspenseful romance movie by by some stretch. But yeah, enjoyed it uh, for what it was. Uh, if you're a fan of Jamie Lee Curtis, you will definitely want to check this movie out for obvious reasons. But yeah, it's it was a decent movie, uh, to say the least. So that's Love Letters. Next up was a foreign import. 
uh, and this is the horror movie. It's not to be confused with the Patrick Swayze movie from 89, but this is, I believe, a horror film from 82, and that is Next of Kin. Really, really suspenseful stuff. Lacking in sort of the scares and gores for a horror film, but the suspense was really there. It was more of a thriller than a horror film, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. Great music in it, great camera work. Yeah, just had a good time at this one. So that's Next of Kin. I really, really enjoyed this one. I had a great time with it. Um, it's a Judd Nelson film. Again, it was one of these movies I picked up on that, that channel I mentioned before. Never heard of it. Uh, I believe it's from the Olive Films label as well. I think they've gone out of business. Uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, I've got a few titles off that label. This had Judd Nelson in it, and it is called Making the Grade. Yeah, I enjoyed this one. It sort of follows this character here, who is very much sort of a Billy Madison type of character. He's heir to an absolute fortune. His father is like a strict businessman. And he says to his son, you're going to have to sort of book up and pass these grades in your class in these in in college if you want to sort of inherit my business so instead of doing that he comes up with a plan to hire someone to take his place to pass the grades who he finds in judd nelson who is pretty much someone who is very much in debt and he says i'll pay you just pass the grades just take the courses and pass the grades that's all you've got to do and that's pretty much the movie of course things maybe don't go to plan but i enjoyed this film I thought it was a lot of fun. Again, another one of these 80s comedies that goes under the radar. Really enjoyed it, so that's making the grade. Next up was another foreign import. Um, I hadn't heard of this movie again. Discovered this from that channel. Absolutely amazing cast in this one. Rod Steiger, Elliot Gould, and Roger Moore in the lead. And it is called The Naked Face. Absolutely really good film. Really enjoyed this one. A suspenseful thriller, different role for Roger Moore as well. I think he made this, I think this came out in 84, so he made this between Octopussy and A View to a Kill. Really good suspenseful thriller where someone's trying to pretty much kill Roger Moore because of what he knows something about. And yeah, there's a betrayal in this movie which sort of caught me off guard. I did kind of know it was coming, but it, I just didn't know who it was going to be. But yeah, enjoyed this one. Great 80s thriller. Great cast. What more can I say? Uh, underrated Roger Moore movie as well. So that's The Naked Face. So next up, I'm going to be moving into the movies I've picked up on Blu-ray, which I haven't watched yet. Then I'm going to get into a couple of bootlegs. So the first one I've got, I picked this up as Halloween season is in full flow right now. Haven't watched it yet, though. One that passed me by for the longest time, and it is Monster House. So yeah can't really comment much on these because i haven't seen them but yeah i'm looking forward to checking this one out it's it's been in the zeitgeist of my memory and with movies that film but i just haven't seen it yet so this next one was me and my good friend mike over at cinema x man we kind of did a bit of a trade he ended up with two copies of this film and i said you know what i've got the harry potter set it's surplus to my collection you can have it if you if you want in in exchange for this and he said yeah absolutely so he very kindly passed on to me the remake of Assault from Precinct 13. Ethan Hawke, Lawrence Fishburne. Haven't seen this yet. I love the John Carpenter film. I don't know if it's going to be as good, but I still think it might be a decent remake. So looking forward to checking this one out eventually. So that's Assault on Precinct 13. Next up, I believe this is a Zach Braff film. I know he's in the movie. I don't know if he directed it. Uh, he might have done. Uh, and it is wish i was here again can't comment on it because i'm not seeing it yet but looking forward to checking this one out i was a really big fan of garden state i love that film uh, so i'm looking forward to checking that one out next up we've got pretty much a decent cast with this one brad pitt juliet lewis david duchovny california again haven't seen it. this is high on my watch list now um because i've heard some really good things about it i love these types of movies sort of early 90s films set on the uh, west coast of america so I'm going to check this one out hopefully pretty soon. So that's California. Next up, two horror films from the Conjuring universe, I guess, which I haven't seen yet. So I picked up The Nun and Nun 2. These are like $7.99 and HMV sales. So I thought, why not? I'll pick them up and, yeah, just give them a watch. So 
both came with slip covers which pretty happy about so yeah that's the nun and the nun two and next up bill hader Kristen wig uh picked up the skeleton twins saw the trailer for this on some of the blu-rays that i did watch uh over the past couple of months and decided to get this one by the trailer look good i've sort of gotten into the habit of doing that Whenever I put a film in on the disc, I always watch the trailers, see if there's a film that I haven't seen yet or want to check out. And this was one of those movies, so I ended up picking up the Blu-ray, but haven't watched it yet. But from the trailer, uh, it intrigued me. So yeah, that's The Skeleton Twins. Next up is from DreamWorks, and it is Kung Fu Panda 4. I enjoy these movies, haven't seen the fourth one yet. I've heard it's decent enough, just not as good as the first. Well, yeah, when are the sequels ever, really, to be honest? But looking forward to checking this one out nonetheless. So that's Kung Fu Panda 4. Pick this one up again. Uh, recommendation from Ash. He was talking about this film, and I was intrigued. I believe the only way to get it was a French Blu-ray. So that, um, And yeah, pick this up. I believe this is like a quarantine movie. That is right at your door. Haven't checked it out yet, but looking forward to it. So yeah, that's right at your door. Next up, we have, I believe this is an Ardman animation with DreamWorks. And, yeah, it stars Hugh Jackman. I kind of picked this up because I think I saw Nostalgia Critic do a review of this. Pretty much, I think he was doing it I'm sort of off the success of Deadpool and Wolverine, as that had recently come out. And that is flushed away. I think this has got a decent cast to it, from what I remember. But, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Want to check it out. Um, from the clips I've seen, it looks fun. That's all I can really say. I don't really know much too much about it than, other than uh, who, el who else is in it as well. So, yeah, that's flushed away. Next up, we've got a movie by Lucio Fulci. Haven't seen this yet. And it is The Devil's Honey. Um, really looking forward to checking this one out. Intrigued by the cover. Yeah, looks like a decent time. So, yeah, going to give this one a go. It's The Devil's Honey. Next up, we've got two BFI movies here. Uh, the first one, I know it's a musical, but I've heard some good things about it, and that is Hair. I know a couple of songs from this movie, but it just is one I haven't seen yet, so I just decided to pick the Blu-ray up. Thought I'd give it a go. That's Hair. The next one, I believe this is, yeah, a Roman Polanski movie, Natasha Kinski, and that is Tess. Know nothing about this one, just wanted to pick it up. I think it was um, maybe from the 70s. Thought I'd give it a go. So that's Tess. And this next one was a movie I picked up because I was watching uh, JT over his channel. And he picked this one up, Roy Scheider. I thought I'd give it a go. Haven't seen it yet, though, but that is Last Embrace. Intrigued by it. He seemed pretty happy with the movie. He seemed to enjoy it. So I thought, you know what? Again, why not? I'll give it a go. See what it's like. So that's Last Embrace. So next up, we've got some um, bootlegs now, some movies. Some of these movies have had official releases. Some of them are going to be stuck on streaming, unfortunately. But yeah, again, big shout out and big thanks to Bumper for sorting me out with these films. He's just done an absolutely amazing job uh, with these movies. So coming up first, we have sort of... Uh, again, some of these I haven't seen yet, so we're going to go with uh, Cuckoo first, or Cuckoo. Intrigued about it, heard some you know, YouTubers talk about this film, so I wanted to check it out. I don't really have any sort of subscriptions to streaming services. I absolutely point-blank refuse. So these are the only way that I'm going to get to watch some of these movies. And Next up, it's a Sky Original. This is, I think, I think this is a vampire film, if I'm not mistaken, but... Wanted to check it out, and that is The Radleys. Going to give that one a go. Um, this one had, like, an amazing cast. I was really sort of uh, intrigued by the cast, and seen it had a good score on IMDb. Natasha Leon, uh, Elizabeth Olsen, and that is his three daughters. So, looks like a decent enough drama. Don Johnson, this one. Um, I've heard this is kind of like a sort of Rambo First Blood inspired movie big fan of don don johnson i've 
finally watched Miami Vice for the first time this year in its entirety. I love that show. And that is Rebel Ridge. So I'm going to give that one a go um, eventually. I want to check it out. I believe this is a newer movie to come to Netflix, and it is What's Inside. So I'm going to check that one out soon. Um, intrigued by it. Cover looks absolutely amazing right on my street. Heard some good things about this one. I think it's a prison movie. That is Sing Sing. I'm guessing by the title it's a musical, but I'll give it a go. Um, see what it's like. I've heard positive things about this one, so that's Sing Sing. Next up we have the prequel to Rosemary's Baby, and that is Apartment 7A. I mean, it's very much like Rosemary's Baby, just sort of an earlier movie, I guess. Earlier tale, but yeah, looking forward to checking that one out. I've heard terrible, terrible things about this one, but Bumper kindly sent this to me, and it is Borderlands. I'll give it a go, see what it's like. I haven't heard the best of things. A uh, movie from 2018 now, I think. This was one of the first movies I think that Netflix put out. Jennifer Aniston in Dumplin'. I have seen this. I did enjoy it. I thought it was a lot of fun. And I just wanted a physical copy for the, my collection. So, yeah, that's Dumplin'. The next one is kind of like one of these legacy sequels. It's a Christmas movie, but I haven't watched it yet because I'm going to watch the original and this back-to-back -back when December comes around. So... This is a Christmas story Christmas. I'd heard this was a decent follow-up, a decent sequel, given the time gap. And I just wanted to check it out. So I'm going to watch this eventually with the first movie on the same day, a bit nearer to December 25th. So that's a Christmas story Christmas. Next up, we've got Michael Keaton in Knox Goes Away. Enjoyed this one. Good, solid Michael Keaton movie. Big fan of his. Uh, Amy Adams, Will Ferrell next in Eurovision. Really enjoyed this. I did see this on Netflix um, back when I had access to it. Enjoyed it. Wanted to get a physical for the collection. So, yeah, that's Eurovision. One I'm definitely intrigued to see, Bill Skarsgård, and that is Villains. Looking forward to checking that one out. Now, this next one is a movie I want to talk about a little bit because... I really like this movie. I really enjoyed it. And I think it's going to go under the radar with a lot of people. So this movie stars Nick Stahl. And it is What You Wish For. I really, really dug this movie. I really, really liked it. It is far from perfect by any means. Just to get into a little bit of the plot with this film. It sort of follows Nick Stahl. Who is a professional chef in this movie. He's sort of out of work. But he has gambling debts, heavy, heavy gambling debts in this film. He meets up with his friend who is also a chef in this movie who has this high time paying job. And he sees this house he lives in. It's extravagant. It's flashy. And he says, how did this happen? He said, this, this line of work I'm in, it's, uh, it pays well. pays well to cook um, this meal. So next all... Given the position he's in, he ends up, without giving too much away, taking the place of his friend for this job in this movie. And you find out the employers, what they what they pay. They pay 300 grand a night for to have this meal cooked for their clients. But without going any much further, the, cli the clients in this movie, the employers in this movie... It's pretty scary what they what they're up to, and it frightened me because I actually believe this probably could happen in real life, and it is so messed up. I just enjoyed every second of this movie. The tension and suspense in this film had me hooked. I did not know where it was going to go. I was on the edge of my seat, like, oh my god, they're gonna these certain characters are gonna find out what's going on. I just loved it. I thought it was great, absolutely fantastic film. It might be one up there as well that goes under the radar for horror fans as well because this movie does get gory in parts as well. It's just the thought of what's going on, but you've got to check it out. You've got to see it. Really, really enjoyed this one. I can't recommend it enough. Far from perfect, but I don't know. This movie just struck a chord with me. Really enjoyed it. So that's what you wish for. Next up, Aquafina. Uh, John Cena, I haven't checked this one out yet, and that is Jack Barr. It looks like a decent throwaway comedy. 
Uh, next up from M. Night Shyamalan, we have Trap. Again, this was a movie I enjoyed, saw it at the cinema, really, really liked it. Josh Hartnett, I thought, was great in the movie. The only thing that sort of really put me off this film was the script and the story. There are moments in this film where you have to really, really suspend your disbelief. Otherwise, this character in this movie has some of the most unbelievably good luck you have ever seen in your life. It is just... It, it, it takes you out of the movie. It took me out of the movie anyway. It just The stars fall into alignment for this guy so many times and so perfectly. It's ridiculous. But other than that, I enjoyed the movie. Solid performance. Really, really enjoyed it. Liked where it went. So that's Trap. Next up was another movie I'd heard so many good things about, but I was a little bit disappointed with it. And that is Kill. It's kind of like John Wick on a train, this film. It's really, really bizarre, over-the-top violence and action, but it didn't work for me. And I'm absolutely gutted that I have to say that. It just didn't work for me. Really, really disappointed, unfortunately. Still a good movie, solid 6 out of 10. Like The choreography was great and the, act, the, the, the effects in it were pretty good, but I don't know what it was. There was just something about the film that wasn't likable enough for me. But yeah, that's Kill. And next up, we have General Ortega in The Fallout. Again, this was a good movie. The opening to this was just some of the most disturbing and chilling opening I have, I have, I have seen to a movie in a long time. Um, obviously, this the, the movie, without going too much, this, this happens right at the beginning of the film. A school shooting happens, and... There's a scene where some students are trying to sort of not be discovered and you can just hear the gunfire in the background. It's really, really unsettling and upsetting and disturbing, but it was executed so well in the film. But that is pretty much in the first five minutes of the movie without spoiling anything else about it. It goes on from there. I really enjoyed it. General Ortega was great in the film. Really, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed the supporting cast as well. But that I, I had to talk about that scene because it was just executed so well, in my opinion. It was just chilling to, to, to witness. So, yeah, that's the fallout. Next up, we have Fly Me to the Moon. This was a good throwaway movie. Re enjoyed it for what it was. Nothing special, nothing amazing. But, yeah, it was a fun time. Fly Me to the Moon. And next up, we've got one I haven't watched yet, which is The Instigators, Matt Damon, Casey Affleck. Want to check this one out. It looks fun. It looks like a decent time. So, yeah, that's The Instigators. Same can be said for this one, which I did see Brad Pitt and George Clooney in Wolves. I thought this was fun. The pair of them have got good chemistry in this film. It was a decent time. It's Wolves. And next up, we have the final Blu-ray, Next, and it is, again, another Channing Tatum film, and that is Bullying Twice. Yeah, I thought this was fine. It had a good cast. It just, I don't know. Again, similar to Kill, there was something stopping me from liking this film as much as I wanted to. I don't know what it was, but, yeah, it was it was fine. It was okay. So that is Bullying Twice. So, yeah, coming up next, we'll be heading in to the 4Ks. So yeah, heading into the 4Ks now, um, these first couple, um, yeah, I picked up some standard releases and quite a few, fair few special editions this month. I really sort of wanted to invest in my collection and have, you know, some great displayable pieces that I was after. So yeah, that's what I decided to do this month. Um, and yeah, I'll get into it. A couple of people I want to mention as well for gifts and things. Well, yeah, so... Um, getting into sort of a little bit of a story about these first couple, um, as you know, some um, some of us from the YouTube community did uh, sort of uh, do a bit of a get together up in Newcastle, the Metro Centre there. Uh, it was myself, uh, Mike over at Cinema Axeman, Nigel and his wife Laura from uh, Rock God 2004, John Mondo Chalovic, Carlos Eastwood fan for life. Sam, Sammy G's World of Cinema, and Scott, the movie critic. Um, we all got together and we had 
a very special and an amazing day. I'm sure there's uh, there's definitely videos out there from some of those channels I've mentioned with footage of that day. It was such a special time. So sh so short, but so fulfilled and absolutely amazing. Amazing company. We had such a great time and we did a bit of shopping. Uh, we went to HMV and I picked up two titles there. Uh, so the first one I got is a movie from my childhood. I, 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 on the drive up, I was like, I've got to pick this movie up on 4K, uh, just see what it's like, because uh, I've been stuck with the DVD for a long time, so it is a Steven Spielberg movie, it's probably not re regarded as one of his best, but I rewatched it, I had a brand new appreciation for it, and it is Dustin Hoffman, Robin Williams in Hook. I enjoyed this film on rewatch, I probably enjoyed it even more. It hit home harder as well, I think, with the passing of Maggie Smith this year, that scene where she's at the top of the stairs and she says, boy, Robin Williams turns around and the fact that they're both gone, it hit home a hell of a lot harder. And I just, yeah, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed the stuff more at the beginning where he's the lawyer, where he loses it when he's on the phone, he loses it with, and the kid, with the kids. It's some of the best acting Robin Williams has done when he's at that sort of in that conference room and he says who many people have been affected by uh, this woman and looked after her It's and everyone sort of stands up it's amazing, it really is I just, yeah, I dug this movie and I enjoy the stuff at the end where he remembers that he's Peter Pan I just really, yeah it, 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 it's hokey, it's a bit clunky in places definitely the 4k transfer shows a lot of the flaws in the film unfortunately despite that but i still liked it i loved it i thought it was it was really good so yeah that's hook and that was in the two for 30 so to go along with that i thought i'll pick this up i haven't seen it and it is the 2024 mean girls i haven't watched it yet i just thought yeah i'll pick it up i'll give it a go see what it's like but when i get around to it yeah so that is the 2024 Mean Girls. And the next day when I got back, I thought, I'll order the original. So I did, on 4K as well. I like this film. I have a fun time with it. Yeah, it is what it is. I like this movie. I think it's pretty good. Mean Girls. The next one is uh, one I had to get imported from the States. Which is really weird because it's a British movie. And the fact that we don't have a 4K for it over here is a bit baffling. Nevertheless, it came with a really, really nice slipcover. Christmas again is on the horizon, and I wanted to get this on 4K because I watched this film maybe two or three times in December alone. I really, really like it, uh, and it is love, actually. Yeah, it's a great movie for me, this one. It's one of my favourite Christmas movies. It should be an overbloated mess, but it isn't. It really does work with the amount of characters in this film. Everyone gets an equal amount of screen time in it for me. And it's just done so tastefully well. Really, really enjoy it. There's funny moments. There's heartbreaking moments. It just works so well for me. So, yeah, that is Love Actually. Sticking with Universal now. I might get the special editions for these at some point down the road. But for now, these are fine for me. So, it is two sequels. I do have the first two movies. This is three and four, and it is Jaws 3 and Jaws the Revenge. Definitely the low point of the series for me, these two films. Uh, Jaws 3 for me is by far the worst Jaws film ever that I've seen out of the four. Revenge is... I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. It's still daft. It's still hokey. Michael Caine's the best part about it, in my opinion, but Jaws 3 for me is close to garbage. But, yeah, I've got some nostalgia for these films. I don't enjoy them as much as the first two, though. So, that's Jaws 3 and Jaws the Revenge. Next up is one of these movies that is from a genre that I've completely got a new appreciation for. And it's the teen comedy from the late 90s, early 2000s. I wanted to get this one on 4K. It looks amazing on 4K. Picked it up, and it is Can't Hardly Wait. The cast, absolutely great. Jennifer Love Hewitt, absolutely stunning looking woman. Love the movie she's in. This one, 
again was great. She's more of a um, supporting role in this movie, but yeah, really enjoyed this one. Seth Green's a lot of fun in this. He is a bit annoying to start off with, but he becomes a bit more likable and a bit more goofy towards the end. But yeah, enjoyed this one. Can't hardly wait. Next up, we've got two newer movies. I uh, picked these up on 4K Steelbook. So the first one we have is Twisters. Now, I enjoyed this one. I was going to get the Blu-ray, but then I thought I, I want to sort of get a nice edition of it. So I opted for the Steelbook. Comes with the Blu-ray as well. The standard 4K didn't, which kind of, it, it, it bugs me that. I don't know why it just does. But, yeah, I like the Steelbook. I like this film. It's a good time. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it even more at home on 4K. It was, it was really good. Sound design in it is really solid as well. So, that is Twisters. Next up, we've got, again, this was a creepy movie for me. Nicolas Cage. Enjoyed it at the cinema. The cinema was one of the best experiences I've had. And it is long legs. Sound design again in this film really, really works. There's a jump scare at the start of this movie. It got everyone in the audience when I saw it at the cinema, myself included. Jumped out my skin. Really, really did get me. The, the, the way it uses the sound, though, it's piercing. It's almost stabbing like a knife. It's just... It really, really got to me and got under my skin. Nicolas Cage, for me, is great in this film. It's one of his best performances. You're either going to get on board with it or you're not. But for me, I did. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought he was fantastic in this movie. But I am sorry to say, when I got this film and rewatched it on 4K, I did notice some of the flaws more in this movie. It moves at a snail's pace, unfortunately. It, it relies on that atmosphere too much. But I still like the movie. It's still a solid 7 out of 10 for me. Really, really enjoyed it. One I'm probably not going to rewatch so much, but I'm glad to have it. I'm glad it's there to fall back on when I get the itch to watch it. But yeah, it's uh, it does suffer, I think, a little bit with that pacing. It, um, it's kind of like I'm seeing a lot of people sort of not liking the movie because of that. But yeah, I get it now. But I still enjoy the film. I still like it, so... That is Long Legs. So coming up next from 88 Films, we've got a 4K release of a movie I absolutely adore. Anyone who knows me knows that I love this film. They know why I love this film. It is just a staple for me. I watch this film a couple of times a year without fail. And it is the 88 release of American Pie. I love it. And adore this film. I love it even more every time I rewatch it. Yeah, not everyone's cup of tea. It may not hold up as much, but for me, it'll always hold a special place in my heart. And 88 films have done an amazing job with this edition. Absolutely fantastic. Nice slipcover, original artwork there. Yeah, just a great movie for me, a comfort movie. Absolutely love this and its sequels. I don't know if the sequels are going to get the 4K. Uh, treatment or this special edition treatment i would love it if they did well yeah for right now to just have the first one on 4k yeah and it looks amazing as well from what i've seen so far so absolutely chuffed to bits with that one and uh, next up we've got some movies that were very very kindly gifted to me from keith over at euphoria pictures he had some of these editions and he said you know what i've got some surplus movies in my collection if you're interested in any of them let me know so he had a selection and on 4k i was like yeah i'll uh, if you don't mind I'll, I'll i'll have um i'll have this little selection please and he said yep yeah, no problem at all sent them my way absolutely over the moon to have them so the first one is cabin in the woods on 4k i thought i'd give this one another go i saw it on dvd back in the day when it came out and i wasn't too overly impressed but maybe with the 4K, I might get something more out of it. I find that 4K does that for me when I've only seen the DVD. But, yeah, I'll give this one a go eventually again. So, that's Cabin in the Woods. Next up, I had this on Blu-ray. And, yeah, want to check it out on 4K eventually. I did watch the, the first movie a couple of days ago. I absolutely love that film. But, yeah, this is Doctor Sleep. Really, really enjoyed this one at the cinema. I thought it was a great follow-up. Uh, to The Shining, and 
yeah, I haven't read the book though, but yeah, really enjoyed the movie. So that's Doctor Sleep. Next up, we have Orphan First Kill that was also sent to me. I enjoyed the first movie, like the twist in it. I haven't seen the sequel yet though, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. And next up, I haven't heard too many good things about this film, but I haven't seen it, so I need to make up my own mind and watch it. And it is Will Smith in Gemini Man. But I've heard this 4K is something different and something special uh, because of the um, the rate it was filmed at. Need to give it a watch eventually though, so that's Gemini Man. And Keith also finally very kindly sent me a Studio Canal edition of Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2, you can't go wrong in my opinion. Absolutely fantastic horror film. Really, really enjoy this one. One of Sam Raimi's best. So that's Evil Dead 2. So moving into some of the Screen Factory titles now. Um, this first one. I bought this. I'm... <laughs> I may be looking for a needle in a haystack here, but if anyone has a slipcover to this movie that is spare to them, please get in touch via Instagram. I'd be very, very interested to sort out a deal with you. It is the remake of Dawn of the Dead from Zack Snyder. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this film. I thought the 4K transfer was absolutely amazing, stunning. Yeah, this is one of these remakes that is not as good as the original, but it holds its own. In my opinion, it really does. It's worthy of a watch. It does its own thing. The setting is pretty much the same, but it changes things up a little bit. New characters are in there. And yeah, I like this one. That's the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Uh, these next five uh, were sent to me as well from Keith. He sorted me out. I, um, I was after a couple of these Screen Factory titles, so he very sort of kindly liaised and purchased these. Uh, for on my behalf for me so the first one we have is the Screen Factory release of The Stepfather I have this on Blu-ray, I wanted to get it on Screen Factory because they just released some beautiful editions and I'm looking forward to checking this out on 4K as well, give it a rewatch, and might get something more out of it, so that is The Stepfather and uh, next up, James Wan I want to say, absolutely really underrated film from him in my opinion and that is Dead Silence. Yep, I enjoy this one. Great twist at the end. Fantastic horror film under the radar. So yeah, that's Dead Silence. <laughs> Next up, a movie I didn't even know existed until I think earlier this year. And that is Phantoms. Great cast. Uh, Peter O'Toole, Ben Affleck. Uh, yeah, Liv Scriber. Really good little horror movie. Really enjoyed it. I'm um, looking forward to checking out on 4K. So that's Phantoms. And next up, we've got another sequel. I really like the first movie, <clears throat> uh, but I remember seeing clips of this of this one, the sequel, when I was younger on TV, and it really sort of creeping me out. And it is Poltergeist 2, the other side. Um, yeah, glad to have this one on 4K. I absolutely love this artwork. I think it's amazing. Oh, God bless Heather O'Rourke, man. But yeah, it's um, absolutely uh, a decent sequel. In my opinion, I'm just looking forward to checking out on 4K. Haven't seen it in a very, very long time, so glad to have the Screen Factory version. So that is Poltergeist 2. And the final Screen Factory title is one I haven't seen yet, and it is a remake, and it's the Amateurville Horror remake with Ryan Reynolds. Looking forward to giving this one a go. It's not too long. I think it only clocks in at 90 minutes. But, yeah, delighted to have this. So that's the Amateurville Horror. So next up, we'll move into some of the Paramount editions that I got. Uh, again, similar to Dawn of the Dead, if anyone has a slipcover for this one or can point me in the right direction, can sort something out. I adore this movie. I adore the sequel even more. But this week, they both arrived on 4K, and it is for me. Anyone who knows me knows I love these two movies. First one, The Addams Family. Absolutely Really, really fun film. I had this hook and Ghostbusters in a VHS set when I was younger. And this was the, probably the one I watched the least because it kind of creeped me out, this movie. But now as an adult, I love it. It's great. I'm making up for lost time with this one. So glad to finally own this on 4K. 
And same again can be said for the sequel. This is this is the one that I watch the most. I prefer this movie. I absolutely adore this movie. This is one of my favourite comfort movies of all time. I love this film. I just love it. Absolutely love everything about it. The only thing is, is I wish Pugsley had a bit more of a role in this film. Completely gets overshadowed by Wednesday in this film. It's her movie. And it was nice to see Paramount sort of issue different artwork for the slip as well. I mean, the image is the same, but the background's different. I really, really like that. Um, they didn't have to do that, but it's little touches like that that really sort of make the additions more memorable, in my opinion. And next up, one of my favourite Kurt Russell movies. I can't wait to check this out on 4K because this movie's pretty much set out outdoors for the entirety of it. And it is Breakdown. I love and adore this film. Again, talk about suspense. This movie delivers with it by the bucket. It's amazing. Really, really enjoy this one. Yeah, great suspenseful film. Breakdown. And next up, Demi Moore, Patrick Swayze. Whoopi Goldberg, Ghost. Really, really enjoy this film. I remember seeing it back in the day for the first time on living TV. And there's parts of this movie that are quite creepy. Uh, really did get under my skin when I was a young kid. But yeah, it's the ending that gets to me now. Um, especially now that I'm watching this film where Patrick, we no longer, you know, Patrick Swayze is no longer with us. The ending just really, really fucking rips your heart out. It really does. It's heartbreaking. But it's so good. Such a good film. Really, really enjoy it. So that is Ghost. And next up, we have the Paramount Steelbook of Stardust. Yeah, a movie is, again, I wasn't big on it the first time I watched it, but on rewatch, I like this movie more and more. And I've got to say, this edition, this has... I won't get them out, but from what you can see on here, this has some of the nicest art cards I have ever seen in an edition. These are just absolutely stellar. They look amazing. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice steelbook, really nice artwork on it, on the front and on the back. And yeah, I just yeah like this movie more and more each time I watch it. Uh, so yeah, coming up next is another special edition. I mentioned the remake earlier, and this was the original. I watched them both on the same day, and it is the Paramount edition of Pet Cemetery. Um, I'm in two minds about this film. I don't know if I like this movie or not. I'm still in a debate in my mind about it. I don't know what it is. I definitely don't love the film, but I don't hate it either. I just can't quite figure out where to place it, where my thoughts lie with this film. There's definitely some creepy moments in it. I'd love the ending to this film. I think it's so creepy. Um, and yeah, I just really, really like like that aspect of the film. Uh, Fred Gwynn is great in the film as well. Really, really like him in it. But maybe I need to give it a couple more rewatches. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens. But that's the original Pet Cemetery. And next up from Paramount, we have another remake uh, from a Japanese movie. But this is the American version it's from the early 2000s, 2002. Naomi Watts in The Ring. I didn't like this the first time I saw it, so I don't think I'd seen it since it came out. I don't know if it's 2002 or 2005, this film. Um, but, yeah, it's it grew on me. I did like it more on rewatch. Um, I think I need it, it needs a couple more uh, from me to sort of, again, make up my mind about it. But, yeah. I enjoyed it a hell of a lot more. I was in a much happier place with it. And again, the addition, really, really nice. Really nice steelbook in this one as well. So that is The Ring. So coming up next, moving into some of the Arrow titles now. So we've got some special editions. Uh, the first one we've got is a trilogy. Only the second movie is on 4K though. And it is the Mexico trilogy. So we have El Mariachi, Desperado, and Once Upon a Time in Mexico all in there. But yeah, only the second movie on 4K. The second movie is probably the best, in my opinion, out of this trilogy. Uh, I need to give it another rewatch, though. Again, it's been a long time since I've watched these films, but I'm glad to have a decent edition that showcases them. 
So yeah, that is the Mexico Trilogy. Next up, another horror remake here, and we have The Last House on the left. I kind of thought this movie was okay. It didn't blow my socks off or anything. There were some moments in it that I liked. Very, very brutal in parts. The revenge aspect is probably a bit more satisfying than the Wes Craven one. West West Craven one's absolutely brutal in my opinion. That movie actually felt like I was watching a real murder. It was just, yeah, stomach churning. But this one, I thought it was a decent remake. It was fine. So that's the last house on the left. And next up we've got probably one of the most sort of critically acclaimed best horror movies ever. Uh, and it is Silence of the Lambs. Absolutely buzzing to have this on 4K. I'm looking forward to checking out the transfer. Really good film in my opinion. Really, really like it. But again, didn't like it the first time I watched it. Just really, really didn't work for me all that much uh, the first time. But on rewatch, I like it even more each time I watch it. So, yeah, that's Silence of the Lambs. So, coming up next... We've got some Universal releases. And I've really, really been enjoying these and really getting into them. And sort of beefing out this part of my collection. So the first one we've got is a movie that... It's an excellent film. One of the best from this director, in my opinion. In fact, I think it's the best movie he's, he's ever created, in my opinion. But it is not one that I rewatch a hell of a lot for obvious reasons. It's Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List. I think this needs to be watched at least once by everyone. And you have, you do have to be in the right frame of mind for this film because it is that powerful. It's an exceptional film. Perfectly acted, perfectly executed. And detailing a horrible time in human history. It's It's just an amazing film. But like I said, it's not one... That is, I watch for sort of entertainment purposes. It's not a rewatch film. It's not a Jaws, a Jurassic Park, an E.T. It's a very different film for Spielberg. But it may be the best film he's done, in my opinion. I just, yeah, I just think it's a masterclass in filmmaking. That is Schindler's List. Next up, we have one from a couple of years ago, 2022, I want to say. I absolutely love this film. I think it's amazing. Great revenge tale. And that is The Northman. Absolutely superb edition. Superb movie. Yeah, just really, really enjoy this one. Great movie. Yeah, I can't say any more than that. It's just, it had me hooked from start to finish. So yeah, that is The Northman. Next up is another movie that is definitely added to my Christmas roster now. So funny. Love the action in this film. And that is Violent Night. Really, really, yeah dig this movie, absolutely love it John Leguizamo plays a great villain in this film as well Yeah, so much fun really enjoy this one, Violent Night next up is another movie from the 90s, I did pick up the sort of spiritual sequel to this film on Steelbook and I wanted to get the original as well so we have Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton in Twister yeah this is one that I saw at the cinema when I was uh, when I was a kid. Really, really enjoyed it, but hadn't seen the movie since then up until I was at university where I picked up the DVD. I wanted to upgrade to this edition because it looks amazing. The spot glossing of the rain on the cover is just absolutely stellar. Little details like that, absolutely amazing stuff. So, yeah, seen Twister and Twisters both at the cinema now, so... Yeah, it's a um, fun little fact I'm proud of. But yeah, enjoy this movie a hell of a lot. So that's Twister. And next up is one of the ones that I did actually watch this on 4K. The 4K of this is absolutely breathtaking. It is stellar. And it is Peter Jackson's King Kong. Now I watched the extended cut of this film. And the extended scene in it for me was a bit unnecessary. I could see why it was cut. But there was, it ended on such a mean spirited note that scene. It was just, oh man, didn't like it at all for that. Um, if you've seen the movie, you know, but 
yeah it's 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 very clunky this movie as well it's a bit similar to hook it's overly long it's it can be a bit exhausting at times this movie the action just never seems to really sort of stop it goes on and on and on and on but i still like the movie i still enjoy it it's uh it's a decent remake in my opinion but yeah i think this was like the big next project he was working on after lord of the rings and people just wanted to see what he was going to do next and it was the king kong remake um, yeah, I think it's a, 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 a decent remake. Some characters in there might be miscast, maybe Jack Black, but yeah, it's it's a decent movie. I like it. So that is King Kong. And next up, we have Charlize Theron in Atomic Blonde. Yeah, I like this. I think it sort of lives in the shadow of John Wick, this film, though. Kind of just, it's been pegged as like a female version of it. It's not perfect, definitely not, but there are scenes in it I do like. Some great action sequences, some sexy moments in the movie as well. And yeah, I just uh, I just dig this film. Enjoy it for what it is. So that is Atomic Blonde. And next up, starring Eminem. I thought I'd get this one because, again, haven't seen this since the DVD days, and that is 8 Mile. Um, good cast as well, Kim Basinger. Uh, the late Brittany Murphy, Michael Shannon. Thought I'd give this one another go at some point, so I opted for the special edition. So that's Eight Mile. Uh, next up, these ones are more of uh, in more of a, a sort of a, a, a flimsier box, but I still like them. I still want to pick them up, and they've got some decent lenticular images on the front. So the, this next one I got was Megan. Uh, I don't know how that's coming across there, but. Yeah, and I, again, another movie I enjoy. A very, very nice steelbook in here. Um, good, solid film, in my opinion. I enjoyed it. I had a great time at this one. It doesn't go as violent as I think most people thought it would, but I still like it for what it was. So, yeah, that's Megan. And I think this next one I want to say is Steven Spielberg's first feature-length movie. Um... I didn't like it the first time I watched it, but again on rewatch, massively, massively grew on me. And that is Jewel. Yeah, a great suspenseful movie. Really, really enjoy this one. Looking forward to checking out the 4K because, again, it's it's all outdoor. I just similar to Breakdown. I just want to see what it has to offer with the natural elements and with the 4K transfer because they're just some of the best that I've seen. Movies like Stand by Me. The best that nature has to offer in terms of 4K, and looking forward to seeing what this movie's captured. So, yeah, that is Jewel. So, next up, we're going to be going into some of the Warner Brothers editions. Now, I picked this one up because I'm a big fan of the Warner Brothers special editions. Those sets are, for me, some of the best 4K sets that you can get. And it turns out when I opened the box for this, it was twice the size, and I had no idea. That I'd ordered this version by mistake. The sequel is getting absolutely slated. Uh, which I kind of think is unfair on it. Yes it goes in a direction. That not everyone's going to be on board with. But I don't think it's that bad of a film. It's not Exorcist 2. Or the Garbage Pail Kids. Or The Room. Or Supergirl. Or Megaforce. It's nowhere near that level bad. But people are treating it like that. But yeah. This was the one I opted for. It's a nice special edition. I don't know where the hell I'm going to put it. But I'll find somewhere. And it is Joker, Joaquin Phoenix and Robert De Niro. Yeah, looking forward to checking this one out on 4K. I'm probably going to get the sequel on 4K as well. But yeah, just uh, a really nice addition as well. So on the inside, we get a poster with the movie, the 4K and the Blu-ray. And a replica of the card he has in the film to let people know about his condition. If you've seen the movie, you know. But yeah. A nice addition, not much going on the back, it's just solid back, there's a spine of it. But, yeah, a decent hefty addition. So, yeah, looking forward to checking that out on 4K. So, next up as well from Warner Brothers, we have the boxed edition of Beetlejuice. Yeah, I love this film, I adore it, I think it's absolutely fantastic. 
again not for everyone um i did do a cut uh, some customizing to this uh box as well because it didn't come with the 4k hd logo i managed to fix a fix one to the spine of it so it fits in with all all the others excuse me but yeah i am delighted to have this and it looks amazing on the shelf now so that is beetlejuice now next up don't want to rant but my god this one was hard to get hold of i had this pre-ordered on amazon and amazon being the absolute fuckwits that they are dropped the ball again too many times now i should have learned my mis um you know never ever to sort of order special editions through amazon but they messed up they messed up hard they absolutely had me bent over a barrel and they didn't even have the courtesy to use any lube and i'm still walking like a duck now two weeks later but i managed to find a copy of this on ebay for a decent price it wasn't it wasn't a, a horrendous scalper price but this is the 4k special edition of a nightmare on elm street comes with an absolutely amazing steelbook as well absolutely gorgeous one of my favorite horror films one of my favorite horror series i love this and the third one two of my favorite horror films the 4k of this is absolutely gorgeous it is stellar they've done an amazing job with it i watched it uh, the next night after i got it it was just it was such a treat such a delight to watch this film i really enjoyed it i'm just glad to finally have this edition but yeah getting my hands on that has taught me to stay the hell away from amazon and these last two editions now, another Warner Brothers one. We have the, I believe this is very, very much out of print. It's the Steelbook collection of the It movies. Um, it, it and It Chapter 2. Um, yeah, I absolutely loved this, loved this set. I watched these two movies back to back. It was one long five-hour movie for me. And I just absolutely adored it. The steelbooks themselves are just absolutely gorgeous. So we have the first one. Absolutely amazing cover with the balloon on the back as well. And then of course we have It Chapter 2 as well to go along with it. With the two balloons. Probably my best experience watching It Chapter 2. I just had an absolute blast with those movies. I still enjoy the first one. And next up we have my last pick up for this video this was the one myself and a lot of people were waiting on and it's from second sight and they did not disappoint with it it's one of my favorite movies from the 80s it does not deserve the score it's got an imdb i think it sits at like 7.2 it should be at least 8.2 in my opinion such an amazing film and again all the outdoor stuff in this movie looked stellar and it is the hefty special edition of The Hitcher. Absolutely fantastic film. One of Rutger Hauer's best. Such an underrated actor. See Thomas Howell as well. Just on his side in this movie. My word. It's, uh, it opens up a can of worms that just turns into a hell of a nightmare in this film. I love it and adore it. But like I said, nature in this film. 4K just displays it so well, flawlessly. It's amazing, this this transfer. Some of the indoor stuff does is hindered, I think, by the grain. But the outdoor stuff, man. Phew. Yeah, absolutely stellar. My dad's a big fa fan of this movie as well, and I just showed him some of the scenes from it, and he was just kind of like, wow. Yeah, felt like you were outside watching it. It was just, yeah, amazing photogenic absolutely stellar but yeah absolutely amazing set we were chomping at the bit for this for years and i'm surprised that it's still in stock at least i think it's still in stock it was last time i checked i thought this was gonna go like hotcakes within five minutes of the pre-order going up and it didn't um yeah absolutely stellar release chuffed to bits to have it and yeah, it's just going to go on my shelf and be rewatched so many more times in the future. Love this film. So that is the second sight edition of The Hitcher. 
so yeah that is it guys um thanks very very much for sticking with me if you made it to the end of this video um i know a lot of people sort of like the longer videos so yeah um gonna leave the video there guys and say thanks very much for watching stay safe and i'll see you in the next one bye for now